we're going to have a special episode today of Savage Trippers. A couple reasons behind that is we took a very long hiatus, uh, almost two months. <clears throat> so we are back, uh, but we're going to do kind of a special discussion episode. And I think going forward as we do this uh, stream, I think we will be doing it like this from here forward. Um Every few episodes, we'll have like a, a recap kind of deal, and we get to divulge uh, more information about your character, where they're at, maybe um, physically, location, um, where they are emotionally, you know, like, are they distraught? Are they doing that? I think that'd be kind of a cool segment to have every once in a while as, as we go forward. Uh, instead of it coming out in game because sometimes those things don't ever come out in game because you're trying to portray that um, being the thespians that we are uh, <laughs> <laughs> or one of us Jim um, you know so we want to get yes uh, so I think we want to divulge a little bit more into the game here um, so I think as we go forward we I know Michelle, aka Switch, uh, was ready to do a recap of last last oh. episode. Yeah. So I feel, since she was ready, I say let's just this is have it. This is have it. I did on. this crazy thing. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. So, <laughs> um, okay, recap. It's long. It's kind of long. That's well, um, good because I mean, that, realistically, that's what we're about here. So. Just know that the humans that you're with right now will probably um, interject and make fun of you um, and Perfect. probably give you applause, um, probably all at the same time. Okay. Much appreciated. I have no idea what happened since the last time I was here. <laughs> no right. pressure. I'm going to tell you all about I'm going to tell you all about it. All right. Um, last we left our trippers. Um, Hal and Bit had programmed the ship to go to Vegetonia, uh, which is a planet in the kingdom of... No. Yeah. Vegetonia is the kingdom. The planet is called... starts with a P. Folate? Help me? Yes. Yeah? Okay, cool. Um, we met when we were there. <laughs> help so me. we went through a wormhole. What? So you can give a... Help me! <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Planet um, plant. <laughs> so we were we went through a wormhole and we were met by uh sir carrington played by marvin uh and nova um and and meanwhile jace and brucon stayed on the ship while doll t4 cole and i went with sir carrington once we realized sir carrington and nova were not threats um somewhere in there hal told t4 cole that we were here for a purpose um, so we come to learn from Sir Carrington that Lord Starch is missing from the Greyblade Forest, um, and he hasn't come back. And he took all of the troops to look for places to grow vegetation. So we decided to help. Um, T4 Cole uses some of the Halo tech to give Sir Carrington and Nova a Halo so we can all communicate and speak the same la language and understand each other. Um, uh, then on our way to help Lord Starcher figure out where he was, we stop at a tavern, of course. Um, we of talked course. to some patrons at the ale house. We learned from Tilly that Lord Starch was carried off. Something about uh, uh, orange warlocks. Damnable orange warlocks. <laughs> they sound bad. Uh, Nova traces the dark magic, which happens to be fruit magic. Um, after uh, we ordered root beers, we took root beer to go. We head out. Now the details may get sketchy. So we find that Lord Starch was captured by the Fruitopian Tribal Party, who deals with dark arts and magic. Um, we are this. <laughs> we are attacked, and then all of a sudden, Sir Carrington is now the leader. <laughs> That's where the notes trailed off. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> I think he was lorded by Lord Starch. Lorded. I don't Maybe know Herb. exactly what the word is making someone a lord. Lorded. Good lord. It's not knighted. No, he, he basically gave up um his kingdom to to Sir Carrington. Kingdom for a carrot? Yeah. yeah. 
he dangled the carrot, um, and <laughs> Carrington took it. Uh, yeah. Reza being as he, he felt he was inept, like if he can be let off that easily, um, that's where what happened to Sir Carrington. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so that I, was. Go ahead. I I am um, I realized that I I must have missed more than my fair share of episodes because I don't know who Sir Carrington is. He's a carrot. <laughs> so <laughs> we will get to that uh, because that's I think that's another part of what we're doing in this episode is people describing because I didn't give people a chance to describe their character on purpose. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted kind of the story to go uh, and this the characters kind of be uh, you kind of get to see them through the game. But now that we've played a few episodes and we took the hiatus, uh, we are back where I think we could start explaining some of the characters that we've already seen. Because uh, I feel like maybe we're all curious. I mean, I think when it comes to Jim, his character has never even met this carrot person, but you'd probably want to know about him, um, those types of things. So, and I think maybe, maybe some people uh, out there watching want to know who these people are also. So, um, so this is what I um, had as a movement towards not this episode, but our next actual episode. Uh, adventure that we next episode where we play uh i have this written down here <clears throat> uh, a year has passed since sir carrington now known as king found the kingdom's eggplant wizard murdered as the investigation continues in the hands of his trusted advisor sir starch king carrington carrington has recently joined in for the ride amongst the stars others have found a place to take a leave from the ship destination unknown set adrift to their next unknown destination they find themselves still trying to figure out the ins and outs of this so-called ship and the purpose of their journey so that's where we're kind of coming where we'll it, there'll be like a year gap uh where you guys have actually done some adventures together and those types of things so as we go forward um i would really like for us to discuss our characters and then we'll move on to um, some things that I want at the at the end where you guys can kind of change some things, okay, um, if you'd like. So, uh, since the first curiosity was about this carrot dude, um, Marvin, why don't, why don't you tell us who this, I'll see if I, I can pull up kind of your, not really your stats, but at least, um, let's pull him up, Carrington, there. So if anybody's curious, it uh, I'm just putting up your hindrances and your edges uh, mm -hmm. up is on the screen now. Uh, so go ahead and describe. You can describe your background, the planet, um, basically the backstory that you've kind of written in there. Only tell things that you want people to know, though. That would okay, you know. Okay. Well, to start off. As you may know, Sir, Sir Maxwell Carrington, his full name, is a carrot knight of Vegetonia, specifically of House Starch. Well, formerly a knight of Vegetonia, because now he is Lord Carrington of House Starch, which was a very controversial move. Because, as you might know, he's not a starch. And a lot of the Lord Starches. A lot of the lords of the starch lands, all the yams, the potatoes, those everybody, are kind of myth at Lord Starch just putting a carrot in charge of the house. And it's like, what exactly was he doing? And that just kind of put a bit of a, I don't know, it called into question Lord Starch's wisdom. And also more specifically, and I know you had this whole plan out with the eggplant wizard, but it, I had a very stupid idea that I want to do. So, we all know the eggplant wizard was murdered, yes? Yes. But it was by his own hand, as Lord Carrington found out. It was all a plan to overthrow the starches and rule over the lands on his own. For you see... 
the eggplant wizard has now become the eggplant lich. Yes, my friends, he has done the most heinous of crimes. He has become pickled. And now Lord Carrington must find a way to stop the eggplant lich by somehow joining his friends, because this is just strange magic, and it's all connected. Why did Lord Starch leave all of a sudden? Why is the eggplant lich now planning to conspire here against Lord Carrington? It's all over Carrington's head at the moment. So, he's put in charge one of his most loyal retainers, and it's gone off with these fine adventuring folk to hopefully find Lord Starch, to stop the eggplant lich's machinations, and figure out what the heck is going on. And of course he's doing it with his trusty steed, Sydney, and Aphid. Yes. Oh my god. Okay, so there's what you're you're challenging me now, because um I had a story going on in my brain with some other people. And I fucked it up. Yes. And I love it. Um because it just adds more dynamic. So um, that's kind of how I love to play these games is throw me for a loop and then let's roll with it. Uh, so, yeah, that I'm interested in that. Uh, can you describe uh, what your character looks like? Right. So Sir Carrington is, of course, a carrot person. Um, it's not exactly a humanoid carrot. Think of the carrots from like veggie tails or something. Carrot arms, legs, but also in plate armor, holding a lance, and it's also riding an aphid. Side and saddle. Know. Side saddle, so. Yeah, side yeah, saddle. Yeah, we, we made sure it was side saddle, because you didn't want to split the carrot. Nah, there's so no he, way he, he rides side saddle. <laughs> so, yeah. so, yes. And an also an important thing, in all the fruit and vegetable people of Vegetonia, while they may seem human-sized on their own planet, when you guys visited that one time. When Sir Carrington is aboard your ship, you find out that he's the same size as a regular carrot. So he comes up to about the big. <laughs> like like the original size of the G.I. Joes. Like, Pretty much, yeah. yeah. Like a little bit bigger than a Barbie. <laughs> so uh, but riding, size... riding an aphid. Yep. So... I don't know why I made the aphids the horse analogs. It just hey. kind of made sense to me. But that was the planet that that's your planet. I was like, these, you don't know any different. That's just who, that's your planet. Uh, so, yeah, that's. Well, are ladybugs like the apex predator for the aphid, for the aphids? Kind of. Ladybugs are pretty much menaces <laughs> on veg in Vegetonia. You wouldn't think so, but they're just vicious little things. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I love the backstory of, of that. Even when you submitted that character, I was like, what the crap are we going to do with this? <laughs> and I was like, I had a stupid idea that I wanted to do. I was like, and let's go for it. it. Uh, so now it's become um, a, a pivotal, not a pivotal, but a pivotal moment, a character that um, is going, because uh, realistically, Marvin, you were going to just pop in once in a while, and you're like, screw this. I want to play my carrot guy. <laughs> so we're like, cool, come on in. And so we go from there. Um, anybody want to know more about this carrot dude or the background of it? Because I think I have his stats up here. On your basic stats, mm -hmm. um, can you give me uh, – because I have Sir Maxwell Carrington right here um, – when it came to your basic attributes, did you have a reason behind putting those together, or, um, or are you just like, hey, that fits somebody that'd be a carrot? I wanted to do like someone who had the heart of a knight, you know, so someone who was good at fighting but also had a bit of knowledge and healing, persuasion, someone who knew his way around the courts, you know. That makes sense. So it was more of a, a knight thing than a carrot thing. Pretty much. That's cool. Though he does have a hatred of fruit. Well, that's that comes with the territory of vegetables, I think. 
I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I've never spoken. Well, I've spoken to one now, you. Um, so yeah, that is, well, now Lord Carrington or King Carrington, uh, however, um, probably put him in as Lord uh, going forward. Because I just have you up here as Carrington because I didn't know where we were going to go with that. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, anybody else have any questions for the Carrot Man? Opens all suggestions, my friends. I feel like it's a cross between Veggie Tales and uh, Bugs Life. Right. Huh. Kind of. Especially with like the other, especially the planet. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. The planet that you guys were were on. Uh, so yeah, he's he's currently in his normal size because you uh, you guys didn't know it at first, but uh, you did go through a wormhole on purpose. So that you could reside on that planet um, as basically a shrunken down size. So you guys were shrunk down um, while on that planet. Uh, so it was opposite of what you probably thought. He wasn't a full carrot sized person. You guys got shrunk down to his size. Um, so you could survive on that planet. <clears throat> Otherwise, it'd just be weird. I don't know. Like it wasn't weird enough. Uh, yeah. Um, who wants to go next on just talking about their character backgrounds and those kind of things? Anybody? Anyone? I'll go. Yeah, I saw him. I was you about to lean forward. Say it, and then you said it. <laughs> I know. After the carrot person, it's like holy shit. Yeah. Now what? That's a, that's a hard follow right there. <laughs> Go ahead, Jim. Go ahead. So, um, my character is Brucon. Brucon is a, um, I always want to say a Cardassian. But <laughs> <laughs> um, they're a Raktashan, which is a cat creature. Um, I kind of want to say he's a vegetarian, but that would be rude. Um, he is a... Uh, Interesting dynamic, though. It would be. Um, he's uh, he actually uh, has a rather senior position, or had a rather senior position in uh, the court of his own kingdom on his planet, where he functioned as essentially like a minister of finance. So um, his um, his strengths are, um, or I guess his edges are aristocrat. Um, so when he sees, I'm sure that when he meets uh lord carrington that you know game recognizes game uh, so there's probably going to be a a bit of a, a shared experience there that will bond them together um but uh Brucon, uh you know he's he, being an aristocrat and and having to schmooze and finagle deals for you know the financial welfare of the country um he's very charismatic um he has definitely mastered the art of um, of politics and saying the right thing at the right time and um, insinuations. And so that's his skill, which he has practiced um, over many years. <clears throat> However, uh, he does not react very well to personal slights or uh, any sort of outward rudeness or um, being lorded upon, I guess you could say. Uh, and he tends to hold grudges for a very long time. And when he gets the chance to enact some, some bit of retribution, he does so ruthlessly. Um, he, uh, I mean, that's the, the basic background of him. Um, he kind of tries to maintain that air of um, refinement and elegance and education. Um, you know, he thinks about, he tends to observe. Uh, when he speaks, he chooses his words very carefully. Um, but he also knows when to kind of not dumb things down, but to um, say the right thing into the right ear in order to get some sort of desired effect. So most of his personal dealings are man manipulative by nature um, because that's his job and he's very good at it. Um, so developing any like close personal relationships um, is just something he hasn't quite figured out because he just can't turn off that side of his brain or how can I make this work for my advantage? So, so that is Brucon. 
What do I mean? <clears throat> when it comes to your looks, the Brucon, what does what does Brucon like height look like? Height. Um, he's most of the time. average height for his race. He's not particularly physically impressive. Um, is uh, he's basically gray fur, like all solid color. Um, he, uh, um, you know, he looks in good shape, but he's not, again, not particularly remarkable. Um, through, uh, you know, through some of the, the, the first episodes on the ship, um, people may have picked up on the fact that he, uh, despite being, you know, having a, a, a innate uh, agility that is, you know, very uh, characteristic of his race, he's not particularly fast. Um, he kind of ambles about and he's, you know, maybe the dimensions of his leg bones are not quite right. <laughs> so he's, he, uh, you wouldn't want to try and uh, rely on him to be quick about certain things in far, as far as like covering any great distance. But uh, um, yeah, otherwise he's, you know, just uh, dressed very, not necessarily ostentatiously, but finely. You know, he believes in the quality of the clothing and, you know, that um, whatever he wears, even if it's modest, that it be, that it last and tend to, tend to pay more for those things. So he's definitely likes to look fancy and be clean. I think that's what, I, yes, we have, we've kind of found that through yeah. story is like, mm, I don't, it doesn't like to be dirty and does like to look good mm -hmm. and be very presentable. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's been cool to, to see, uh, that character kind of move along and, and try and be in like this haphazard ship, um, and the dirt and grime and yeah, it's been, it, that's been a cool dynamic for me to watch, yeah. uh, you do that. Yeah. It's, it's very much, uh, you know, with, with all the different things that were happening at the early stages, you know, trying to kind of make sense of everything, uh, pay attention to the details, but then also in the back, he's kind of just gnashing his teeth. at just kind of the, the uh, not gross. He's not grossed out. It's just kind of the, you know, the, the dinginess of everything. Yeah, why is everything it's just sticky? <laughs> right. It's like, is there nobody to clean? <laughs> you have time to lean? Do you have time yeah, to clean? Yeah, we yes. Uh, so that's been kind of cool. And I, I think as we, um, we go on, on, especially this episode today, um, we'll get to work some dynamics together, um, as we kind of build this world together. Uh, and that's why I was, I, we will go over, um, just to give it, well, we'll go over a little bit of some of the characters that are not here today. Uh, but your guys is kind of take on those characters also. So, uh, next one. Uh, let's go with uh, T4 uh, Cole here. T4 Cole. Um, uh, T4 Cole is a mixture of two characters that have been kind of mashed into one. Um, and, and it's kind of the soul inhabiting a different body um, due to a, an event where the, the internal core of a android is in completely fried essentially um but the entire body of a human that they were kind of a pair beforehand um is also dying as a result of this so they get mashed together into this kind of six foot tall um very security type looking droid um that is t4 cole um t4 is the original name of the android and then cole is the original name of the individual uh outside of it and they've kind of been mashed together so um as well as since it's a security robot it doesn't really have a, a vocal pattern that makes sense to humans it doesn't have that dynamic range or ability to produce noise in that way because it's not a droid that's meant to talk it's a droid that's meant to keep things safe um so learning how to overcome that boundary has been a, uh, it was one of the things that i think would be really was interesting for me to to bring into this um and for to like create that dynamic that if you aren't handed a device that will let you listen to it or you're not another android that can already talk the lingo 
it's it's a lot of beeps and boops and whirs and it doesn't make sense outside of that um i think another thing that'd be really cool moving forward if i if i can nail it down in time um was to also introduce asl or some sort of like sign language type thing into his repertoire since he does have functioning hands um as another way of means of communication for him so um but he comes from a uh, a sci-fi background that I've, I've left kind of purposely not fleshed out yet um to to help fill in as needed in, in the background i know that um c4 did c4 and cole before they were connected initially uh worked on a ship with uh both switch and uh our other android friend and i'm blanking on the name of unfortunately jace yes, yes jace thank you um before all that and before i think i think before jace was activated since jace believes he is human um and then with switch for a while and then both of you guys got lost in that ship and that's kind of where we've been working out details on that so um but he's been a lot of fun to play i'm excited to bring more bring back more character dynamics between all everybody and get to like know both Carrington and Brucon a little more because I have I have a pretty established history with Switch and Jace, but outside of that I'd like to build dynamic interactions with everybody else. So And I think that's what um there that's another reason why I was kinda gonna fast forward. Um mm. uh, you know, kind of not for the fast forward, but you know, skip kind of a, a year. Yeah. Since we went on hi- hiatus anyways, I thought it'd be kinda cool to put those dynamics in there but like when when fan when you came to me and said hey I, i'm thinking about a mute character and i'm going uh it's a live stream for entertainment <laughs> and that was my first reaction and then i go yeah let's do this <laughs> i was like i really did i was like yeah if i mean if, if i can have a carrot person and i was like and a cat with a chainsaw We'll talk about that here in a little bit. Um, mm. Yeah, I think that'd be a cool dynamic. And I really, I think that would be really, really nice uh, to have like uh, some sign language kind of put in there. Do you, do you know ASL at all? I'm, I'm, I've been learning it a lot. Oh, here cool. So it's like I, yeah. a passion yeah. now of yours. Yes, okay. It is, it is. Well, it's been a passion of mine for about a while. I just haven't dedicated time to actually pursue it. Um, and now I've been able to with quarantine and all that and making time for it. That'd be super cool. I'd love to see a character that actively does like sign language. That'd be super cool. So so I'm really excited about that. I'm excited about the dynamic of, um, of how that would put in there. Cause I remember when we were first talking about it, that was my initial reaction. And then I went, Oh, that's cool. It took me like maybe three seconds to go. No, that sounds great. Um, because it's just something we've never, I've never done. And yeah, uh, it's something that gets, like so so often looked over and i another thing that kind of the the story behind why i decided to make him a mute is i i ran into somebody at pax unplugged last uh, 2019 um that that was a mute and was was going around with people trying to talk about stuff and like asl is a great barrier like a barrier to, over, to overcome that barrier of being a mute, like like to be able to interact with them on that way where they you know instead of them just nodding yes or no they having the ability to talk with them like that because they can't speak or don't speak right um, that's super so, rad. So I think that'll be super fun to see how that dynamic plays out um, through what we're going yeah, forward. That, that sounds really, really cool. Fun. Yeah. And what what does T4 like currently like? Could you describe what um, T4 Cole looks like? Uh, I would say it's a lot of like gunmetal gray uh, body parts. I would say the center torso has like kind of this weird mashup of where it's gone from the gunmetal gray to like this silver part where the core has been replaced. Um, and then it, he's got like a, uh, like a functional kind of like leather, or not, not, not leather, probably like a polyesterine and then, you know, plate carrier type deal on his front. Um, that, that holds most of anything that he needs. And then he has like a backpack that's attached to the plate carrier as well. So. Super cool. I can't wait. This uh, I really was when you talked about that. I was I'm super excited about where you guys are doing these things. Um, so uh, uh, our full, uh, fourth and final one that we'll 
discuss actively um switch michelle let's let's yeah. hear about this this character here oh switch um uh well switch is a droid um and i kind of modeled them after all of my favorite droids of all time in media because <laughs> where else do we pull our influences from so like i made a mood board that's got everyone from Dolores to Trinity to uh, Motoko, all of those things uh, in it. So I, um, yeah, so that's kind of what, what they're modeled after. But um, I kind of wanted them to be uh, kind of a badass, um, uh, shotgun wielding, human acting uh, uh, droid that is aware of aware of their droidness but um doesn't outwardly to express it because there's a huge sense of loneliness that comes from um being a droid to them in particular um they don't they can't decipher between what is actually their own memories or someone else's memories or something that was programmed or something that they saw in the media or TV or something. So um, I, would, I wouldn't say they're necessarily always sure of themselves in that way, which is why I took the, um, like for the hindrances, I took the kind of tongue tied mm -hmm. um, because appears outwardly confident, but, but isn't as such because there's no concrete like memory that, that they can pull from the data, you know? um what else uh i would say they're kind of well in relation to t4 and cole they're kind of and this just evolved from playing like i tried not to go just like fen said the same thing i tried not to go too deep until we saw how the interaction went but um a uh, newer model than t4 and cole but has that connection with them um kind of ended up being kind of blunt and curt <laughs> with everyone like doesn't doesn't really have a filter uh whatsoever um uh let's see what else what else what else um, named their shotgun delma <laughs> i'm trying to think of what else um, uh, what about what um uh, how what switch looks like like oh um i made them really tall um about 510 looks relatively human um relatively slender the only distinction that you would know that would make them a, a droid would be the left completely left arm is robotic and i was the picture i pulled for that in my brain was like johnny silverhand from cyberpunk like that kind of arm so yeah mishmash of all my favorite <laughs> sci-fi stuff and robots so yeah i think that's one of my favorite things to do i mean realistically yeah. is just pull from <laughs> If I took this yeah. movie and put it in this movie and this character and this, <laughs> exactly. uh, I think that's where why we play these games, right? So, mm -hmm. no, I was very impressed with like the idea of your character um, just coming in as as a non-binary um, mm -hmm. droid because you're kind of like realistically, why would a droid be binary yeah. anyways? What is gender anyway? You mm -hmm. know, um, which is. To then it was I think I did a running joke at the beginning with you is like a nine non binary binary that's <laughs> yeah, binary because right. I mean it's like because <clears throat> you're a droid so realistically yeah. you are ones and zeros uh -huh. at your core but yet you're non binary so I was like oh that's yeah. kind of I think I funny. think it's a it's not a hard fast um yes or no or male or female or any of those things there's a lot of blurred lines i think that's what makes up their character because they're so confused about what could potentially be real anything could be real so right i think i'm gonna continue to kind of explore that and in their interactions with other people which yeah, i'm really been... enjoying like i love the connection i have with jason and t4 and these newfound carrot friends and um making fun of the <laughs> the cats which i didn't intend but it just kind of came out so no offense or anything it just well and that's how our episode i think our whole series started, started was a cat and droid <laughs> adventure uh which was super cat cool and droid walk into a bar yeah, yeah let's do it um 
The other one says duck. Uh, so not make fun of teasing, I should say. I should correct myself. Yeah. <laughs> but as you had mentioned, it was like you're talking about your closest with T4 um, and Jace, um, mm -hmm. who Jace started off, um, and I'll even put Jace's stats up here. Um, his little so over here. Uh, Jace is also uh, a droid uh, that doesn't know he's a droid. Just thinks he's a smart, learned, read, has a bunch of books. Um, so I'd like to go around. I mean, I don't know who whoever's played with the character, played opposite the character uh, of Jace, but I'd like to hear your guys' take because I know Switch, you kind of started off saying, yeah, the the camaraderie, and then I know T4 Cole has some camaraderie there, and then Brewgrounds had some interactions there. So, I mean, I'm not just saying this, but everybody, I mean, we all have, we've all like bonded and made good camaraderie for, yeah. Short so, I just, thus far. <laughs> Jace will be a kind of our first one because you mentioned him. Um, yeah. then we'll go on to the uh, couple other characters that have shown up and, and come through. So, uh, let's talk about Jace. Hmm. Anybody? I mean, to me, Jay seems like the base is everything in logic or not. It seems logic, but all he talks about is his library. <laughs> he's has a, it seems like he's got a clear intent, a uh, program to follow. Mm -hmm. You know? I definitely think like it's the, I, I love the dynamic that he believes that he's human because of where he started, where he like kind of woke up and where his memory kind of begins. Um, and I love that that he is um, bases everything in logic based in the library and his books. And, you know, we don't see the books, but they're there. Um, and they're definitely stuff that he has because, you know, he um, leans very heavily into, like, the logic and reason behind those books. Um, I love that dynamic. I love that, that's, that grounding in reality that, while still kind of fantastical in its own way um is grounded in like the the like the, the truths that exist so yeah. yeah i was i always thought it was, it was it's interesting in that he he doesn't seem to have an intuition about anything right he's like you know what should we do it's like let me look it up you know <laughs> so and that's just the lack way of he, common sense yeah the way he interacts with the world is <clears throat> Um, you know, he doesn't really, you know, he, he, he learns from his experiences, but he doesn't really, uh, extrapolate, you know, and I think his default mode is, well, let me look and see if somebody else has done this in the past and what has happened. And, mm. Um, so he, he tends to trust his library more than his own intuition, uh, if there even is one, but and so, like, it, it's kind of interesting. I really, I mean, I, that was my interesting part of that too, is like his belief system is I've got to look it up and research it. Um, but when he goes into the, the, those books don't exist. He, he has that knowledge in him, but he doesn't believe in himself enough to, yeah. to take action or, or go, Oh, this is what we do. Let me go research it. I don't know. Let's see if somebody else. And then he really defers to himself. Uh, you know, which is, a str I think that's a cool, uh, realistically, it's kind of like us as human beings making decisions. We need that validation also, right? It's like, oh, I, I don't know if I should do this. Let me, let me ask so-and-so that knows more than I do. But really on the inside, you've already made the decision. You already know what to do. You just need that validation. So he gets that. I feel this is what I see is he gets that validation through his books, um, which are really just his knowledge. Yeah. To, to me, the, the perfect analogy is um, if somebody asks you, you know, quick, what's the letter that comes after P? And it's like, all right, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, Q, Q comes after P. Right. That's the only way I can know what letter comes after another letter is I have to actually go through the process of getting to the letter. <laughs> and it's, you just don't know it. You have to get there. And to me, that's, that's what he does is – he that's just a great know it. He's like, I have to go look it up. <laughs> <laughs> it's like just my first reaction. I need to look this up. Uh, so I really, I really appreciate um, uh, how he puts in there. Um, anybody else have any takes takes on Jace? 
He sounds like a very learned person, just like the great onion steers of Vegetonia. <laughs> I can't keep up with you, Marvin. I just, I can't. So I make up all of this. I know. On... So me trying to get your, the lore of that planet and your character, I'm never going to get it right. So I will always defer to you and your books. Uh, so uh, let's, let's, if, uh, when it comes to Jace, if nobody has anything else to add, um, we'll go, um, let me pull up this other one. Uh, I just want to find the, the small stats here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change it over to this one. So let's talk about um, our short uh, meeting and interaction with Taswoop uh, from episode one. If you guys, there was episode one, right? Yeah, Tess Swoop was in episode one. We haven't seen Tess Swoop since. Uh, played by Ryza, Ryza's character. Uh, do you guys remember Tess Swoop? Yes. Um, <laughs> I feel like Rukan would. I think there might be one word yes. for Tess Swoop. <laughs> Chainsaw. I'm not wrong. <laughs> no, that was uh, Tess Swoop. No, that's Doll. The Doll. We'll get the Doll. Doll has the chainsaw. Doll has the chainsaw. Oh, I thought it was uh, okay. Yeah, to swoop was. Oh, that was that was Lucy's character. Yeah, yeah, and we'll we'll get the doll here in a bit. But uh, to swoop is kind of rambunctious. The alcohol. Yes, and was drinking a lot of holographic drinks. Um, if you remember, holographic uh, drinks. Yeah, there's there's a lot of <laughs> yeah. You got to watch like the episodes you weren't in. It was, it was completely different than. Uh, Vegetonia, that's for sure. Um, the swoop was played by Ryza, uh, has some hindrances. The hindrances was it has an obligation, um, overconfident, ruthless, and stubborn. Um, and I feel like she played those quite well. Um, <laughs> realistically, like, I can do this, shut up, let me drink more. What are you guys doing? Why aren't we going to the bar? Um, she was that character, um, and will be still that character. That is the character that during when everything was going crazy, um, on the haphazard ship, uh, just disappeared. And later to find out, took one of the, uh, what it would, the escape pods, the only escape pod that was there and all the alcohol was gone. That that's what ended up happening. All the the that would be why the alcohol. <laughs> there was no alcohol left in the kitchen area that you guys found on that ship. Um, the only sustenance was non-alcoholic or food or something to that effect. Because, um, yeah, she took it. I mean, you guys went to that, and on the on that note, we can go and talk about Doll, uh, which is the chainsaw wielder, uh, wielding cat. Um, uh, the furred menace. Yes. And before you, I think before even you came into the fold, uh, Carrington, uh, she was already nibbling on carrots. If I, do, if I'm not mistaken, I'll have to go back and get, she was already eating carrots. So this might be something, uh, might be a dynamic that goes somewhere, but yeah. Um, when it comes to doll. That was played is play doll is played by Lucy. Uh, hindrances is curious, uh, illiterate, and small, but has an edge of brawler. So little and scrappy, uh, and carries a chainsaw. So anybody have some um, opinions on on doll the character? Doesn't like cucumbers. She's a cat. Nobody <laughs> likes cucumbers. <laughs> Fair. The but usual fear of cucumbers. So, yeah. Um, Carrington always calls her the furred menace. Yes. Mostly because on his planet, furry creatures like rabbits and stuff like that are monsters. Wow, you know, and you didn't get to see a... And not, yeah. But so, he has a hard with a chainsaw. And, 
I mean, yes, that's especially concerning. With that contraption, what was it that you called T four a chainsaw? Chainsaw. Uh, yeah, I like that dynamic too. It's like the switch is kind of going. I don't understand what this is, and Karen King's going. I don't understand what this is either. Like on bo- on both flip sides. So I thought that that naivety on both sides was kind of like, well, I'm kind of taking a note on this, um, on what this chainsaw thing is. Um, and I know switch is kind of like, I don't, I don't know what an aphid is. I don't know what a carrot is like, what is this? So that, that was kind of a cool dynamic, um, during those interactions. And then the final one that hopped in for a little while, um, for one episode, uh, was Nova. Uh, Nova was in there, was which was played by Ariel. Okay. Uh, she hopped in there to... to she's never played an RPG before in her life, which was Yay. pretty cool for her to pop in and, and play a full couple hours, a couple hour yeah, episode. she was great. She had some dynamic in there. She comes from a thespian background. So uh, <laughs> she kind of hopped in and uh, that was kind of a cool thing is like when she asked, she goes, well, what do I do? And I said, well, it's kind of like improv acting with some rules with some boundaries she goes okay i could do that i was like okay (laughs) so we sat down and i was like uh i'll help you build a character and i opened it up she goes oh i want to do this 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 okay does that look good i was like holy crap i was like she just clicked buttons and said this is what i want to be and i have an idea and after she played uh also had some ideas of the aftermath of her uh, her background and her what she's going to do afterwards and her reasons for doing what she did. And I was like, holy smokes. I mean, there was some stuff in there. And because she ended up being perceivably not all good if you if at the end. Uh, I think the motives if the motives we don't know. And I know what they are, but I'm not going to divulge them to you guys because I don't want people to know uh, because I think it makes it cool. It really did because I was like, oh, there's a lot of stuff that you guys kind of divulge on the back end. It was like, cool. I don't only tell what you want people to hear um, during this session, especially. And uh, most of her stuff was actually actively during the game, like during the game was asking, can I do this? What if I did that? I was like, just go for it and make me work. That's because I had no idea that it, her motivation or anything of Nova's motivation. Uh, but no, uh, Nova is basically um, a fairy, um, realistically, and has magical abilities. And I don't know if I won't divulge um, what she was carrying, if unless you guys saw it. I don't remember it in the battle, um, mm. but she. Flies around with a little wand and um, is decently aggressive. <laughs> and I th- wings was a cool dynamic. I thought it was a pretty cool dynamic. Had the, our magic, it was the, our first, like, and maybe at this point, our only, uh, like, magic wielder, in a, a sense. The only person I think I've seen in our, in our group that has leaned heavily into the magic realm. Yeah. And it's, I think it's, it makes for a really cool dynamic to have that. that contrast between that's a lot of the sci-fi stuff that we started out in to have this fully magic individual mm-hmm. yeah I, 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 when she wanted to do it i was like i think that'd be totally dope because it gives you that um shadow run kind of feel you know you get you have that magic with technology and i thought that was pretty cool so she had a really good time and um i i had a good time just having a new person that's never played a game before uh never played an rpg before that that was super cool i, I always love those moments those are some of my favorite especially if they have a good time um, <laughs> always be remembered as an honored interpreter of the starch lands yes so say of lord carrington because she she was uh learned in different languages and um that was something she she chose before we even played like She's she's traveled and and she knows multiple languages. I was like, okay, cool, that will fit in very well. <laughs> Since we're going to Vegetonia, it would be very very important. 
Um, so as we got through our characters here, here's my next, here's my next thought for today. Um, will be twofold uh, for you guys as characters. Did you want to change anything stats wise for your characters um, going forward? Because if you want to do that, go ahead and do it. This is your last chance to do it. Uh, because realistically, I'm thinking at the end of, because this arc isn't over. Uh, but once the arc is over, that's probably when we'll do, uh, like, giving you guys a stat boost. And we'll I'll, I'll decide on what points I'll give you to kind of give you some more stuff. Because um, normally in Savage, Savage Worlds, you kind of, you can get another, uh, like, a, points to spend for your attributes or something to that effect um, is what you get so you can actually bump up your die. Uh, we'll get to that at the end of the arc. But here, do we want to change any stats or add some stats, move something around? Because I think the only thing we did for the first three episodes was I know we added hacking. We swapped out um, hacking for T4 coal. And I think yes. that was pretty much the only stats across the board that we talked about. Was there any yes. other ones that you guys... I thought about Carrington or Marvin. Yeah, I wanted to change like a couple things with uh, uh, Sir Carrington. Not a whole lot, but I wanted to put like writing at a D8 because I feel like he's going to be riding around on his eighth steed a whole lot. So, oh, instead of the D6. Now, where would you? Because right now you're currently in your skills have a writing of D of a D6. Yep. Now I you'd have to, to take something from somewhere else, right? Yeah, and I know I took it out of something. I'm just not too sure what okay. it was. It was a D4 somewhere, I think. Maybe a knowledge? Common knowledge? You'd I take your... That's... So you'd go basically to no skill in common knowledge. No. Nah, Which might common. make sense. I mean... You're going to be a carrot on a ship. Yeah, it's common knowledge <laughs> in Vegetonia. Okay, because I'm like, where else? <laughs> because I'm sitting there like, uh. <laughs> yeah, that would Just let me know, because I, I know it, if you want to bump yours up to, to a D8, um, we can adjust as long as you're adjusting stats wise. But yeah, these are kind of this. This is going to be our final before we go into. Our next where you can actually just change those things. Because I was giving everybody like a few episodes to kind of figure out the system because none of us have played the system before. Yeah. Um, and is there like a flaw that's like small? I think you mentioned for Lucy's character. A flaw? Yeah. Something that's like denotes him as, hey, he's very tiny. You, a hindrance? Yeah, you yeah, have a hindrance. You have a hindrance. Um, and what's cool about hindrances is like when you take a hindrance, it it hinders your character in one way, but you gain the capabilities to add something else. Um, so in your character, I'll just pull up his your basics right here. So right now you have an edge of aristocrat um, and beast bond because of your of your animal there, but you have code of honor an enemy um, for your hindrance. If you add another hindrance, that's how this system kind of works. Is like if you add another hindrance, you may get the capabilities. Find a hindrance that will give you the capability to add, to bump up your skill. Mm -hmm. See, that's how these hindrances and stuff work. They kind of let, they balance themselves out. So you could take like 20 hindrances if you built your character, um, if you really wanted to. Uh, but it would give you certain things you could spend in different areas. Um, yeah, found it. A uh, minor hindrance, small size and toughness are reduced by one. And what does it give you? Because uh, you're putting this as it'll like, oh, you know how you can now add this. Um, so put that in there, and then see if you can find what something. That, what's that? Oh, I was going to say, as far as the hindrances go, I thought um, if you took a hindrance. Um, you can make it either a minor or a major hindrance. Right. Yeah. And you can, if you get a major hindrance or two minors, then you can, you can uh, pick an edge. Uh, right. And then if you, if, 
Yeah, and if you find an edge that gives you, you know, uh, find an edge that would give you uh, something in writing. And it, it, you know, right. f- you know, would bump up, give you the capabilities to bump up your writing skill. So that would be something you want to look into so that you, you would balance your character. Um, but also not have to maybe not rob something from common knowledge or something else. You could just kind of add a hindrance to do that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, take, take me that before our next uh, adventure and then we can go from there. Yep. All work in progress. Yeah. Uh, but this will be kind of our last mode before uh, we actually can't change our character because after this arc is over um spoiler well i'll be giving you guys a bump right because it's kind of like leveling up uh and i haven't really figured out what i want to do for the bump yet but um i'm sure it'll be some sort of point expenditure um those type of things uh so that was one thing i wanted you know anybody else want to discuss anything about changing your character stuff stuff you can go to a part two point i think the hack was the only thing that made sense to change but after that i think he's yeah cool yeah i feel the same i kind of want to stick with what i got and play that out cool well then the, the and so the last thing that i wanted to do was since you've been we're jumping ahead a, a year um you guys have kind of done some adventures stuff and things and and um think about what those would be um actively you know we can come up with those kind of things but what it would directly affect would be this was kind of a crappy haphazard ship right so over the last year within reason what do you guys think you would have done to the ship to upgrade it make it more comfortable those types of things that was kind of my my last mm-hmm. thought here for this session. How it is when we started this, it's just a bunch of like seats and a bunch of shipping containers strapped together, right? Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's it was a bunch of chairs in the middle room um, mm-hmm. where you could basically jack in, right? Um, kind of like Matrix ish, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, put it in the back of the the skull there, um, but not as deep, but. And then, then oh, in the middle like, of the I room, like... there was chainsawed chairs left there. Um, and there wasn't a lot of visibility to the outside. Remember, there was like maybe one or two small windows in like the um, not kind of a control room, but not like uh, an actual deck, like uh, uh, no pilot's chair in a sense. It kind of self-piloted. What do you guys you feel probably... you'd want to have that ship have? A greenhouse? They do have a dependency. I think for Sir Carrington, I don't know if being planted in soil would be a good one for a carrot. Or maybe just have a greenhouse where you can soak up some sun rays so he doesn't die. Have your So your leaves can be exposed and and not wilted and not wilted is, is the greenhouse just your room carrington where you just put yourself and pour out dirt over yourself when you go to bed yeah that's pretty much <laughs> like a blanket you just, <laughs> just the dirt oh, that's a great idea i was like i mean i think quarters is yeah. definitely something right mm-hmm. uh so i don't know what i know Brugon for sure is gonna want his own quarters. He's like, can we just clean the thing? <laughs> we yeah. start there. <laughs> Where's the mop and bucket? <laughs> uh, yeah, and after being on there a year, I was like, all the if you guys wanted to remove those all those chairs in the middle um, or repurpose them, probably would make more sense, right? I repurpose some we, of them. Yeah, I think we repurpose some of them, make them more functional like one if we need to like jack in for any reason keep one alive for that purpose but repurpose like the rest of the room because i could be like to turn into like a cool like you know mess hall style um room where we can all like our common area i guess if you want to think of like firefly where they have like a kitchen right one part and you have like the long dining room table um but i think it'd be cool to i think quarters for everybody makes a lot of sense 
Um, you can resection off some of the shipping containers differently. Um, so to facilitate that a little more. Um, this will make the bridge a little more functional. Yeah, I was thinking about that too. I was like, um, because it was, the bridge would be a little bit more where you can actually pilot the ship. Um, but I think that would be more. limited to uh, the droids um, mm -hmm. at this point, just at this point. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, you think about it, it's been a year, but it's also only been a year. Um, mm -hmm. So a whole new ship in a year is not going to happen. But I, and also building a whole bridge that's 100% functional for a humanoid character to pilot might not be something because you guys work on ships, but you're also, you know, you're droids. So yeah. put them to use. Just a thought. Yeah, I mean, in a year, we would have been able to assess the damage and sort of, you know, figure out what needed to be fixed and modified. Yeah. Trying to gauge how I'm looking at the photo of it. How, how big is it? Um, I mean, it's, I'd say the size of, I mean, I was trying to build it in the sense of a, just a large shipping container. Um, but I was also thinking in space, a shipping container is not going to be like something you'd see on a, on a, on a boat, right? right? This is a huge shipping container. So enough to fit, um, a ship in it, um, and a large probably i'd say the size of two basketball courts in a sense let's look at it that way okay. um so and like you know football field okay two basketball football courts. yeah football <laughs> field's just too long i was because i was thinking yeah. very square square yeah right so um yeah that's what's kind of thing like two basketball courts kind of side by side so it's kind of kind of square uh the, that type of thing and it's the ship like a, a good size a good size single story house yeah that's i was thinking that like, you know like <laughs> but a like actually a good sized one you know um one you would see in the midwest or something like that a very ranch style um no yeah. it refresh my memory that there was only there's only one deck there aren't multiple levels to this place correct. is there correct or to the uh, to the ship Okay. So one level so flying ship. ranch. <laughs> From here to here, one level ship. Okay. Did we name our ship or are we just calling our ship Hal? Because Hal oh. is the ship. Okay. I mean, the AI is still there. Okay. <laughs> wait, your vessel talks to you? <laughs> Doesn't yours? Oh, you, oh wait. you will you'll experience that uh character in our next episode so many strange things out here <laughs> i'm just getting used to the metal but the, people and if we if uh you call it metal <laughs> well it is what you are yes that hand is made of steel only the hand the arm the arm well i'm sorry the arm is that what you're but calling I would it? it is made out of steel, such as T4. The ship. How you're able to move is so strange to me, though. How you're able to move freaks the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Robots, I can... Me, as a person, I can understand a robot. But a freaking <laughs> carrot, I don't know. I, so... That's kind of what I, um, if you guys have any other ideas about the ship and, and those types of things, because I really feel like, especially quarters, um, uh, maybe come up with like how your quarters would be set up. Um, cause okay. I, I have a feeling I know, I mean, Marvin, you gave me a good feeling of, you know, the greenhouse, the dirt, the, with Ben telling you, it was like, oh, what about just digging some dirt? Um, I don't think Brucon would ever come to your room. Um, it has a lot of dirt, and that's just weird. Uh, but I feel like it was maybe... in a box. <laughs> <laughs> right. it's, I mean, yeah, it's... it could work. 
it doesn't exactly need much room. Just have a box. Maybe just put a pot with some dirt on it. Because I have a box of dirt in my room, but I use it for something else. Oh. Uh, mm. Just a box of dirt in your room, Brucon. That would be I something. Just know. Do I want to know what you do with it? <laughs> he, he, he grows carrots to eat. <laughs> no, uh, I think that's what I kind of want to end this this session on. Um, you guys going over your characters, getting some more vibe going of like, oh, I want to let's play these characters again. Um, let's find out kind of what happened over the last year of your travels uh, now, because it was a little bit difficult to put um, Lord Carrington on the ship all of a sudden. Um, mm -hmm. So I thought this would be kind of a, I I could come up with a way, but I, I, it just always it felt forced and kind of hokey, and, mm -hmm. and I didn't want that to occur. And plus, there was some backstory uh, that I was chatting with Marvin before of like what happened once everybody left. So mm -hmm. the murderer and and all that type of thing was kind of a uh, a cool story there because Nova is actually still on that planet also, realistically. So she had some, uh, Ariel had some input of like what she would be doing afterwards and, and, and those types of things. So I wanted that to kind of add to the backstory. Um, and especially now that robots have shown up on that planet. So that planet's definitely going to change over time, you know, with that kind of strange technology showing up. You know, we introduce robots and a spaceship to a medieval vegetable planet. Yeah, and also, you know, a, a a cat that was on your side that helped you, and that's not a thing. So, yeah, so that that kind of gives some dynamic to the history of that, and then we'll jump a uh, a year ahead. <laughs> but yeah, we'll um we'll be back. Um, what we're scheduled for next next Sunday, and and I'm ready to go. I have. But I really wanted to get a kind of a recap, and, and I know that some people couldn't show up and, and those types of things. But here going forward, we are going to go and finish out this arc. Uh, should probably only be a couple more episodes, maybe two or three. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll decide as we go. That way we're not trying to rush things. And then go with that. Anybody else have any other closing remarks as we are about to sign off? From the internet, we don't have to sign off, but thank you, thank you, Scooter. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Scooter. No, that's I, I feel bad for not being around for a while, but uh, I mean, do your thing. Yeah, life mm -hmm. life is a curious thing, and like we can plug that on the ad. We're I think as human beings, I always want to put this out here is these are some of my favorite humans um, that I've met over the last. I mean realistically fairly new right i mean in our lives uh i mean some of us we've known each other for a few years some of us for god almost eight years marvin um it feels like it i mean i remember you when i first met marvin he he wasn't legal to drink <laughs> yeah. and that's weird isn't it? <laughs> it was weird i was like now it's like huh uh now i think he even gets a a break on his uh on his insurance, right? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I just think that's kind of cool that uh, this is kind of a newer era in all of our lives, these these people that we know in this group, which is becoming more consistent. So as we play this game, um, I think we'll divulge some, some really cool, especially now that Jim's doing acting, that's pretty cool. Really? Yeah. So, all eyes on you, sir. Nice. <laughs> so, he's like, oh, crap. <laughs> uh, no, but any any final things before we sign off, guys? Because um, I'm excited to get back into this game next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward Same. to the show. Looking forward to getting every, to know everybody more. I'm looking forward to the vegetable puns. Right? Oh, there will be many. I can't can't say I'm like looking forward to that as much as you guys are, but <laughs> it'll be at the time. It'll be appropriate, at least. Uh, yeah, I will. 
<laughs> okay. Well, we're going to sign up from the internet um, and stop streaming here in a minute. So thanks everyone. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you're watching, um, if you're watching this in VOD, um, awesome. Uh, and if you're ever curious about uh, what transpired before this, you can always find our playlists, uh, our collections and stuff on Twitch. They're always there for free. Um, and on youtube.com slash time to tabletop, we have them in a playlist there too. So you can always catch up on past episodes. So the things that we're talking about, you can go back and go, I don't remember that. And then you can go back and go, oh crap, they made up some crap that didn't actually happen. Hmm, that's probably they true call too. Call us out on it. <laughs> yeah. Call us out on it. I don't care. Because oh, yeah. at the end of the day, we're all, we're all humans, right? Or are, are we? we? Yeah. Right. I was thinking the same thing. I was like, <laughs> of course. We don't know. Okay. So. See you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we will see you uh, next week, people. Adios. See you. Goodbye.